Dr. Edmund Locard formulated the basic exchange principle of forensic science as every contact leaves a trace. Later, criminologist Paul L. Kirk expressed this principle as follows. Wherever he steps, whatever he touches, whatever he leaves, even unconsciously, will serve as a silent witness against him. Not only his fingerprints or his footprints, but his hair, the fibers from his clothes, the glass he breaks, the tool marks he leaves, the paint he scratches, the blood he deposits or collects. All of these and more bear mute witness against him. This is evidence that does not forget. It is not confused by the excitement of the moment. It is not absent because human witnesses are. It is factual evidence. Physical evidence cannot be wrong. It cannot perjure itself. It cannot be wholly absent. Only human failure to find it, study it, and understand it can diminish its value. So, this exercise is paper chromatography. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the inks and pens and how can we tell the difference between a document written with a Bic versus a document written with, a, a, say, a Parker pen. So what we need for this is we need, the best thing to have is some coffee filters. These flat cone ones are nice because they're already kind of flat but you can use the cup-shaped comb fil um, coffee filters. You'll just need to kind of try to flatten them out. Uh, so this is our chromatographic paper, coffee filters, and then we need a chromatographic chamber. And you can use any glass jar. So if you have an empty jelly glass jar or a pickle jar, that'll be fine. This is a little canning jar. Um, about this size is good. Um, you want it a clear glass so you can see through it and keep track of what's happening with your chromatography. You want three to four pens. So I have here's my other one. I have four pens here. I have three black ones and I have one blue one. We're going to see is the ink in these three black pens, are they all the same? I need scissors, I need water, acetone. Okay. Acetone, that's, that's like nail polish remover? Acetone you can buy at the store, it's fingernail polish remover, buy the cheapest you can. Um, the fingernail polish remover sometimes will be pink or blue, try to get the clear, it'll be easiest and it's usually a little bit cheaper. So acetone is basically fingernail polish remover. Um, what you want to be careful with is acetone is a solvent and you don't want to get it on any painted surfaces. You don't want to get it on a finished wood surface because it'll start to dissolve it. So you want to be a little careful with your acetone. We want a pencil and some sort of a straight edge. I have a ruler here. A measuring spoon, one teaspoon measuring spoon. If you don't have a measuring spoon, a teaspoon will do. And you want to have your notebook and a pen to write down notes to keep track of what you're doing. 
So what we want to do, the first step is to make our chromatography paper. We want to cut out a little rectangle that will fit into this jar. And we want it to come just about to the top of the jar. And you can do this pretty freehand. So I cut off the bottom to make a nice straight edge. I'm gonna cut off one side to make a nice straight rectangular edge. And then I cut off the other side. And you'd be surprised how small a piece of paper you have to get to fit into this jar. This will get you two uh, chromatography papers and we'll see, does it fit in the jar? I might want to make it a little narrower and I definitely want to take about a half inch off the top. So I'm going to take a little off the top and I'll make it just a little bit narrower. And you can see what we want to be able to do is just put it in the jar and let it have it sit straight up. You can use paper towels. If you use a paper towel, what you would do is um, cut out a longer piece of paper so that you can kind of fold it over the edge to help it stand up straight. Is there a reason why your glass is glass and not like a clear plastic or metal? You wouldn't want to use um, plastic just in case the acetone dissolved it because acetone will dissolve plastic. Um, if, so one of the things we're going to suggest is maybe you could try some other solvents. If you wanted to try it with watercolors, watercolor magic markers and just water, then you could use a clear plastic cup. That would be fine. But if you're using the acetone, stick with glass. So if you don't have coffee filters and want to try it with a um, paper towel, you would leave enough of the paper towel so that you could fold it over the edge of your cup. So our papers are ready. We're going to get together our solvent. We want to put in one teaspoon of acetone. one teaspoon of water, and this is going to be interesting. I have such a big container. Maybe I'll dip my spoon. Oh no, I can put some in a cup. And one teaspoon of water. That's all you need. It's a very, very small amount. This is a case where less is more. And we make the solvent first because we're just gonna let it sit and let our chamber fill up with the fumes from the solvent. Now we're gonna get ready to make our sample. So this is the chromatography paper and about one fourth of an inch from the edge, you can see here is the bottom. One fourth inch from the bottom, I'm gonna draw a straight line. And you see I didn't measure. It doesn't have to be exact. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some small lines about every three eighths of an inch. So I'm just gonna make a little cross mark, four of them since I have four pens. So I have a little cross mark and I will label them one, two, three, and four. So a line, cross marks to tell me where to put my sample and one, two, three, and four, because I want to record exactly what my samples are. So I have in my notebook one, two, three, and four. I'm going to put some glasses on to make sure I don't mess this up. All right. So sample one is going to be an American Academy of Forensic Sciences pen. And what I do is I just make a little period point right where my small line crosses my uh, longer line. And then I write, this is the AAFS pen. So that two weeks later I can come back and I will know what that dot is. My second dot is going to be my Pack Health pen. And this is the blue one. So you won't be able to see much difference in my dot. 
So this is the Pack Health pen. My third one is a, read it, Jetstream pen. So this is a Jetstream pen. Three is Jetstream. And number four, just to do something a little bit drink different, is a Sharpie pen. This is a Sharpie and it's also black. So one, three, and four have blank, black ink, but are they all the same black ink? So now what we're going to do, I don't want the solvent to go above this line. So I'm gonna kind of just look and make sure, no, my solvent is way lower than the line. Make my paper nice and straight. And I am just going to put it in, let it, it doesn't matter if it goes like that, but all right. And you can already, hopefully you can already see that the ink spots are starting to climb. What happens is the acetone water mixture will um, rise up the paper and it's called the solvent front, how high the um, solvent has gone up the paper and the inks are flowing with it. And I'm gonna put the lid on because the vapor inside the chamber is also important. So it's like a wick. It's like a wick. The solvent is going to um, absorb up the height of the paper. And if the inks are soluble in our solvent, if they dissolve, they'll go up with it. And if the ink is made out of a mixture of different things, some will flow faster than others and hopefully we're going to get some separation. We're going to see uh, spots with different colors. AAFS one, that was number one. Number two is the Pack Health and this is the blue one. But it doesn't look all that significantly different. Well, it, it does look different. It does as it separates. Yes. This is the jet stream just to prove because a good forensic scientist would not just take my word for it right <laughs> and here is the sharpie you can see there are three black and one um, we want to you want to let this rise until it until the solvent front gets close to the top of the paper when it's close to the top of the paper we're going to take it out and let it dry you don't want to get it all the way to the top because it'll stop there and other things will keep flowing and so you don't have as, as uh, good a result. You've kind of skewed your result because you've let it go too long. So things that you could try if you want to do other things, you could try um, using all acetone. Instead of using a teaspoon of acetone, a teaspoon of water, you could try two teaspoons of acetone and see what happens. You can try the paper towel and see what happens. You could try all water. Um, if you have isopropyl alcohol at home, you could try a teaspoon of isopropyl alcohol. That's just rubbing alcohol. You could try a teaspoon of rubbing alcohol and a teaspoon of water. You could try a window cleaner. If you have Windex, you could try that and a little bit of vinegar. So think of the things that are solvent right. that might dissolve in ink and you could try any of those. You could try, um, I used all ink pens, you could try a watercolor magic marker, you can try the Sharpies that are permanent magic markers. The watercolors would probably do better in an all water solvent rather than the acetone water. So I'm starting to lose sight of it. Ah, we've got about an, an inch or two to go. Our spots have gone, our solvent has gone to fairly close to the top. So what I'm going to do is take it out and lay it down flat. And I'm going to take my pencil. And the reason we use pencil for the line and pencil for this is so that it's not gonna dissolve in our solvent. So this is my solvent front. This is as high as the solvent ran. The next thing I'm gonna do is mark all of my spots. 
So I hope you can see that right here is a yellow spot. For our blue pen, look, it did have blue ink in it. So we have a blue spot. And for the other pens, we will call this the spot for this one because that's where it's darkest and this is kind of a tail. This is the spot for our number two pen and this is the tail. And this is the spot for our Sharpie. I'm marking them now and when it's dry I can go and mark them and make the marks darker but you need to do it right away so you don't lose them. So the question is can we tell the differences between the pens? The AAFS pen has the, the purples, this is more of a bluish one, this one is a little bit darker. These are very hard to distinguish but our AAFS pen had a, has a yellow spot in it. The uh, blue pen has a very light blue in it. And these two are different purples. And they traveled a little bit uh, different distance. These traveled the same and they're very close together. Um, so what I'd like you to, guys to do is try it with your own pens. I also have some samples to show you of other things I tried. So this was my experiment using the same four pens and pretty much the same setup. And you can see I got the same results. Um, a little less dark, maybe I made my spot a little lighter. You can see the blue at the bottom, the yellow at the top. They pretty much traveled the same distances. This one I tried pure acetone. And pure acetone would not work for these pens because you see they like the acetone very much. They just all traveled with the acetone. Very interesting was the paper towel. I tried it with a paper towel and you don't see the yellow and you, the blue is not very obvious. But look, in the paper towel, they each traveled a different distance. So I could separate those four pens with a paper towel just because they travel at different distances. So I hope you will try this at home. Take pictures of your chromatograms, take pictures of your setup, and post them to the uh, library Facebook Messenger and we will put them up. And um, if you have any questions, post your questions. If you have any comments, we will be sure to respond. Thank you very much.